folks, Gary Bunzer here, your RV doctor. We're here with Larry McGow from RV Comfort Systems, and uh, his website, by the way, is rvcomfortsystems.com. We're going to talk a little bit about his product called the Cheap Heat, which basically is an add-on component to your existing propane furnace. And what it does is it, you allow, uh, there's an add-on component with a heating coil, electrical heating coil, whereby you use electricity to heat the coach instead of burning propane in your furnace. Now, when you're in a campground, you've got electricity available. Why not use the electric heat that's available instead of burning your onboard propane? And then when you go on the road, obviously, you flip a switch and you go back over to the propane side of your, of your, of your, heat, of your furnace or your heating system. Very similar to what some water heaters do with an electric heating coil in the water heater as well as burning propane to create the heat. So, Larry, welcome. Welcome to us. And uh, we've got a couple components of your cheap heat unit here. And let's start with the coil because this is what you have here on the desk right now. Then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the, uh, the important other components. So tell us a little bit about the coil. Well, one of the challenges uh, has been in, in the process of designing this or being able to provide enough heat to actually heat the RV clear down to those colder temperatures well below freezing. Uh, you're limited with an electric plug-in heater in as much as you've only got as much power as the wall socket will provide, mm -hmm. and that's about 1,500 watts. Uh, plus, you have a tendency of it, if it falls over and mm -hmm. it's pointed against it's something. It's just not safe. Right, yeah. exactly. Where with this, this thing, uh, depending on the size of shore power, and in, in, with the newer RVs now, you're finding that most of them are coming out with 50 amps, this thing will generate 5,000 watts worth of heat. Uh, and uh, unlike a gas furnace, which is about 60% efficient, this is 100% efficient. 100% efficient. 100% efficient. What we found in the RVs that we've got this thing installed in right now, we've got, um, we've got people that are living in RVs that are 38 feet, 40 feet, uh, at temperatures, well, it was 9 degrees here a couple of weeks ago in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got people that are heating their RVs 100% with this running absolutely no gas and still have reserve heat the fan the furnace is cycling on and off mm -hmm. uh, that's how much heat this thing produces um, it's amazing the other one of the advantages also with this is we have the ability to have three different heat levels i noticed that you've got three different w uh, wattage ratings here on the end which will show the camera here in just a minute but why three different types of wattages well we've got <clears throat> couple of reasons. Number one, different sizes of RVs are going to require a different amount of heat. Mm -hmm. We've also got the fans in them may not move as much air. We've got RVs that have a 50 amp circuit, some have a 30 amp circuit. Uh, the uniqueness of this coil is depending on which one you select, uh, this will run on 115 volts at 30 amps or this will run at 250 volts on the 50 amps. This will do both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's basically all in one. It's this, the, the way the system designed. We tried to make it so we could cover the RV industry from, from the smaller 20 footers mm -hmm. all the way up to the 40 footers and be able to do it with one system. Ah, I see. And basically, so it's the same one singular coil assembly that the installer then just chooses here at the end which wires to connect to determine what the wattage output would right. be. Right, and, and, and by holding it all in this one system, it allows us to have the safeties uh, 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 associated with all three different heat levels mm -hmm. are common to all of them. This system, unlike, again, electric uh, plug-in heaters, has redundant safeties in it. It has two automatic high limit temperature switches Let's flip that this around. will, that, it, that that at 200 degrees will shut the system down. Talk if, about these limit switches right, right here. And if one fails, then the other one kicks in. And if those fail, then there's what's called fusible links behind the panel inside here. They look like little diodes. Yeah. And these things here, at 333 degrees, <clears> these <throat> things internally open up. And then they shut down. There's nothing you can do to make it run. It's not resettable fusible link. So no. fusible link, once it burns through and once it's gone, then this has, unit has to be sent back and replace the entire coal assembly. A exactly. And the method to the <coughs> madness is, is if you close off all the registers, if the fan fails, if anything goes wrong, these things are going to burn through internally uh, and they won't cause a fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so redundant safety features basically means that the, for the end user's uh, 
uh, sleeping at night, it's not going to be a concern because you have redundancies built in. Yeah, exactly. This actually has more safety features in it than a gas furnace does. Mm -hmm. Now, you're still using the same fan on the existing furnace to blow the heated air throughout the coach. Right. And, the, and, and that's some, exactly. We're, what's ha this is after the furnace. Mm -hmm. What happens is we're using the fan. This is attached at the end of the furnace. And then the ducts are reconnected to a small plenum that, that, that this is inside of. Mm -hmm. And so the air blows through the furnace uh, since the gas furnace isn't on then this does all the heating of the air, pushes it out the coach, and we're good to go. We've done temperature checks with this stuff, and in some cases, we've actually had where this thing produces more heat at the registers than the gas Than furnace. the propane burning. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It, it depends on the installation. Mm -hmm. It depends on the duct runs. But uh, we've got temperatures in duct runs of up to 145 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you've seen it. Work. Well, I, I, I witnessed two installations of this product, and I personally measured the uh, the duct temperatures. One of them measured the closest duct to the furnace, where obviously you're going to get more heat, uh, actually measured 143 degrees that I saw with my own eyes. And the furthest duct from the furnace in this, how long was that fifth wheel? It was 38 foot. 38 foot fifth wheel. The furthest duct in the living area measured at 95 degrees. So when you balance that out over the course of the interior length of a coach, it was quite toasty in that coach. It was nice and comfortable in there. Yeah, and the other thing you got to realize, that was only a four inch duct. Mm -hmm. There was an uninsulated duct mm -hmm. that ran full length of the coach, mm -hmm. and you still had 95 degrees worth of temperature coming out of it mm -hmm. uh, that, he that heated the coach. In fact, we've gone back to the lady and talked to her, and uh, she said it's the best thing she's ever done. <laughs> her complaint was, believe it or not, was her, she's got granite countertops, and her granite countertops were cold. <laughs> and she says, you know, now my floors are warm, my granite counter, everything's warm. I know she was looking forward to walking <laughs> through the floor of the coach without her slippers on during the course of a winter. So this is a great add on product. Now it, it fits uh, across the board. Which furnaces does it work on? Which one is it not applicable to? What, where's the delineation, the line yeah. of delineation? It fits on the suburban furnace and the Atwood hydro flame. Now, that being said, the issue is clearances. Mm -hmm. uh, any one of the furnaces this goes on, it's going to have you're going to have to have a little clearance. In most cases, you'll find that it takes a, a roughly additional six inches added on to the overall length of the furnace. Mm -hmm. So if you've got ducts on the end of the furnace that are sticking out, uh, you're going to add about six inches mm -hmm. to, to that length. Because not only do you have the width of the heating element itself, but then this mounts into a casing where the ducts then have to be reattached. Right. So you're adding overall about six in six extra inches. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. About six inches. Actually, if you go onto our website, which is www.rvcomfortsystems with an S, rvcomfortsystems.com, under the uh, How It Works page, uh, you'll find that there's some graphics down at the bottom, and it lists the different models of furnaces and it'll give you kind of a graphic of what this looks like mm -hmm. when it's installed mm -hmm. on the end of the furnace. Mm -hmm. If you go to the frequently asked questions page, at the bottom of the page, there's a compatibility chart. And it actually breaks down and it tells you what size shore power you have, mm -hmm. what model of furnace you have, and it'll, it'll even tell you the clearances down to an eighth of an inch of what you need to be able to put this in here, mm -hmm. how many ducts you have to have, mm -hmm. all of those things. Now, one thing I do know you recommend is that if anybody's interested in this product as an add-on product, that you do uh, really appreciate if they were to send you a photograph of the backside of their furnace, if they can get to it. A a absolutely. Uh, yeah, a picture's worth 10,000 words. Mm -hmm. um, that way, uh, we can help the uh, installer make sure that he's selecting the correct product for the job mm -hmm. we can make sure that the clearances are there mm -hmm. um, uh, again there, there's a couple of things we need to know we need to know what size shore power you've got uh, a, a, a picture is worth 10,000 words if we can get a picture of the mm -hmm. back of the furnace um, 
and uh, a manufacturer name of the furnace and, and preferably a model, model number. Model number, right. I, I appreciate whenever people send me the type of RV they have, but that really doesn't help me. No, no, uh, you have to know the model number of the furnace right. that's in your RV. It does help to know the brand of RV as well, yes. so you'll know basically what kind of duct distribution system is pre-existing in the coach right now. So you can't give them too much information, folks. No. So if you're interested, make sure you let, us, let him know the year and, and brand of the RV, the year, model number, and the type of furnace that's in your, in your coach as well. Now, this is not really a do-it-yourself homeowner project. Is that correct? No, no. We only sell this through through um, RV dealers. Um, this is a fairly complicated process. It's nothing that a, uh, a qualified RV installation facility uh, can't handle, mm -hmm. uh, but you are dealing with uh, a line voltage or, or residential style, style uh, high voltage uh, as well as the 12 volts. And you want to make sure not to mix those things right. up whenever you're getting them Certified in Certified technician is the best way to go. A a absolutely, absolutely. Show us the other box that you have there. Now, yeah, this is the controller that actually we use um, that, that runs the system. And we've, we actually went through a lot of trouble designing this controller. This thing is, is over-engineered, uh, about as over-engineered as you can get. Now, I was impressed by this device when I first saw the product because... Uh, when I review products, obviously, I look at the construction and how it's made and, and what type of uh, care or thoughtfulness went into the design. Tell us a little bit about the things that are in here that the, it's not visible to the naked eye and that even some technicians may not know about, but it certainly is a plus for this product. Yeah, the, the box is, is a NEMA 1 box. It's actually made out of 16-gauge steel. Uh, welded joints. Uh, I'm not saying you could drive a car on it, but I, I, you might be able to. <laughs> it's a hefty box for its small size. The printed circuit board uh, <clears throat> is uh, everything in it is designed by over designed by 35 to 40 percent. Uh, the most current that the system draws at any point in time is just over 20 amps. This is a 30 amp relay, so. Uh, the wires. A lot of lot of headroom in that yeah, in that spectrum. The the the, the circuit. Uh, uh, strips, and you can see how wide these strips are. These electrical paths are designed for an excess of 30 amps. Uh, the fans in the uh, the fans in the furnaces draw roughly 10 to 15 amps, 20 amp relays. Mm -hmm. The the really part that we're real proud of is the the speed controller here. The speed controller uh, we've designed in such a manner. To where that this thing has a solid copper ingot across the back of it that you can see is actually screwed into the back and it uses this whole box as a heat sink um, that way if the installer decides to stuff this someplace uh, underneath your rv where you can't get to it you don't have to worry about this thing overheating because it uses this whole box mm -hmm. as a heater mm -hmm. and this is your speed controller here that you're looking at in the center and then you can, there's these multi-taps that you can pick off of it. And the installer has to do this. This is not something that the homeowner wants to do. They'll, Once this is installed, the homeowner doesn't even think about this and box. And you should never need access to this box again. Right. Uh, your, 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 uh, your line voltage comes in on one side and your 12 volts comes in on the other side. Well, now from a consumer standpoint, how do they switch from the electric heat of the add-on component back to their original configuration of an LP gas furnace. Well, that's one of the nice things about this. From the consumer standpoint, uh, they use the same thermostat. All of the controls in their coach are the same. So they set the thermostat just like they would if they were burning propane. Right. The only difference is, is they have this switch in there, and that's installed wherever it's convenient, and it's just a matter of picking between gas and electric. Pretty uh, simple. Yep, that's it. There's, there, <laughs> there's nothing else for them to do. There's nothing, that's the only thing you actually see as the consumer is the switch. That switch. Everything else is hidden and totally out the of sight. The solid state controller that runs it is, is, is underneath. Mm -hmm. With the electric heater, everything is all buried. Now, it's you do add a circuit breaker into the system, so they do need to know where the circuit breaker is located. That's the only other Right, there'll be a component. disconnect switch, and yeah. then there'll be a, a separate circuit breaker that they can turn on or turn off, mm -hmm. you know, if it if it resets, mm -hmm. uh, which you shouldn't have a problem with, and that that the installer is going to put in. Right, right. Well, this sounds like an incredibly 
well-engineered product. I personally have witnessed two installations and, uh, uh, and we'll be uh, going through an installation on another one very shortly, uh, which we hope to videotape that installation, so stay tuned for that as well. But Larry, I just got to say this is one of, the, uh, one of the better engineered products I've seen come down uh, in the aftermarket in a long while. So I appreciate you sharing a little bit more in depth with us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I appreciate your time. So this is the RV Doctor, and uh, we'll see you somewhere down the road.